Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I sit on the Board of Trustees of the North American Menopause Society. Today I'm joined by Dr. Hadeen Jaffe, who's Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School with a joint position at Brigham and Women's Hospital and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Welcome. Thank you. So sleep, sleep disorders in midlife, it's so common. What type of sleep disorders do we see? So sleep is complicated, as you say. Um, the challenge is that women are aging, and you do start to see age-related changes sometimes in midlife, which includes sometimes women starting to fall asleep and be tired on the earlier side, maybe sleeping a bit less, total sleep time going down. But superimposed on that, we see a very distinctive pattern of sleep changes in the menopause transition, which is sleep interruption. And the most common scenario is for a woman who has hot flashes, who wakes up repeatedly throughout the night. Most women don't wake up you know, more than a few times, but oftentimes it's very disruptive, very bothersome. Sometimes their hot flashes and sweats are so disturbing that they're awake, they can't fall back asleep, they're changing their pajamas, they're very hot and uncomfortable. Is it always hot flashes that's responsible for the frequent awakening? There are so many women who do complain of mid-insomnia and then they can't get back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So it's not always because some women are getting up to go to the bathroom. Sometimes they don't know why. Sometimes it's age-related changes. And we think that even though not all the awakenings are related to hot flashes, in women who have hot flashes, they have more awakenings in general. Um, sometimes people worry, you know, they ruminate, they're very distressed, they can't, they run the to-do list, they run the worry list, they can't fall back asleep. When should we be considering as healthcare practitioners to do a sleep study? Yeah, so the, the case where the concern about a, a sleep study is when we're, the primary reason when we suspect sleep apnea, and that's the other reason why some women will wake up. So men are at greater risk for sleep apnea um, than women, except in very specific times of women's life, in particular the peri and uh, postmenopause. And sleep apnea, you know, is hard to diagnose sometimes because you need a bed partner often to report the snoring or gasping or to observe the behavior. And women if, may not be aware of their behaviors, sleep behaviors at night. Um, they may feel tired in the morning. They may be just depressed. They may have feel insomnia, but they may not be aware that they're snoring, gasping for air. Um, so if somebody is, you suspect sleep apnea by virtue of true sleepiness during the day, not fatigue per se, but can't stay awake when they're mm -hmm. driving and they're sitting in a car, um, as soon as they sit down and have a quiet moment, um, that's high suspicion time. Also, if your primary treatments for sleep problems haven't been as effective, particularly somebody who's heavy, but even in uh, less heavy women, you can see sleep apnea related to upper airway uh, tone that might be altered during menopause. Are hormones ever an appropriate therapy for women with sleep disturbance? Th that depends on what the sleep problem is. So if the sleep problem is related to hot flashes or um, menopause per se, then hormones would be really very, very effective. Um, and that's, you're trying to indirectly treat the sleep problem by suppressing the nighttime hot flashes. If it's uh, insomnia related to, you know, a true anxiety, preoccupation, can't fall asleep, or sleep problems related to depression with early morning awakening or sleep apnea, they would not be a primary therapy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.